Hello everybody, this is 2248 Aaron, and whether you know it or not, I have quite a knack for access control systems. Um, predominantly Wigand systems, such as for something like this. This is a Wigand access control reader. Pretty hard to breach. But, as with any general hobby, you like to know all about it. And in this case, I have an actual really, really pretty old and pretty, I mean, this was a pretty new concept at the time carefree keyless access control system. This was probably made in the 70s or 80s, back before, back when the, all this was mainly new. Um, I don't know how new it would have been, but I'm sure this is something people would see on TV in a movie, like, you know, in the perfect house. They would have a keypad, and oh my god, you'd want one of these, and you'd go about anyway doing that. And I can tell you right now, these were probably cheap. I mean... They're cheap and easy to install. As you can see here, it is a very large bundle of four conductor telephone wire. That's all this literally is. And we have, for the de this demonstration, we have not the most age-appropriate magnet or locking device. I just have a standard electromagnet. One of these less expensive ones, but generally speaking, these are actually really nice. I have a couple of these. This is just a spare that I have. So. As a matter of fact, let's turn it around so you can see the LED. Okay, so here's the keypad. Um, when you press a button, I don't know if you can see it, but there's little neon lights under here that light up, um, helping you to illuminate it. And it all can, goes to this, boy, this little thing right here. This isn't, I mean, this isn't that technologically advanced. And here is pretty much just a timing circuit for the relay which unlocks the door and these this is definitely is not the easiest thing to do uh, because the way you insert the wires it's very narrow so not the easiest and there's oh, another thing I've noticed is this is just a flat piece of plastic there's no actual way that I can see where you, the wires would come out of so I'm guessing they expected you to mount it on the wall and the wires would kind of just poke out through the sides I don't actually know okay so it appears that Everything is done in here. All the logic is in here. So theoretically, if somebody were to pull this off the wall, they could just cut this and then short two wires. It actually specifies in the manual that to put it, put, put a button inside, like like let's say you wanted to uh, put an exit button for this, you just attach a normally open button to two of the con the circuit, two of the wires coming to from this. So not the not the most secure thing, but then again. Not a lot of home security things back then were necessarily the most secure. We've come a long way. Although I'm sure there's some people to this day that would still install it. Not that it's very secure or anything. Like I said, I would go for one of these where the output of this is completely proprietary. Meaning you can't like short this. I mean you could short it, just nothing would happen. Alright, so how this works is actually quite cool. You have a keypad. The, the default password for this is 1251, so we're going to enter that. The little light comes on, then you press pound. And then the magnet unlocks. And then the relay clicks back on. Now, you can hear it in here when I unlock it. Can you hear the relay? Yeah, that, that means that it's done in here, which isn't, again, very secure, but... I wouldn't trust this on my house. So, the way you uh, change the password is actually quite strange. When you pick a pa when you pick a um when you pick a code for this, they ask you to have a five digit code. Now, it's a four digit code to get in, but they ask you for five digits because what we're gonna do is for this the default code, but I've changed it. So the default code the code I've selected for this is one two five one zero. Now to change the password. So I actually probably require a piece of paper to explain. This is a little sharp and that'll work. So this is the code that I selected, 12510. It's a five digit code. Now these numbers, and yes, I am left-handed. 
are just the standard numbers you use to get in. Now, to change the password, what you would do... Whoops, that is supposed to be one. I don't know if this makes sense, but you would enter 1250 when changing the password, not 1251. One. See the 123 one, and then the fifth digit. Alright, and then so let's enter 1250, and then you have to press the attach straight twice. And then the light comes on and tells you are in programming mode. So let's say we want to change the password. Let's do. 4231. Alright, so we're gonna, before we enter 4231, let's decide the uh, secret fifth digit that you're not supposed to tell anybody. Let's do, I mean, it's recommended that you don't do something that you've used before, so let's do 5. So we're gonna do 42315, and then star, yep, star. So, 4231. The magnet opens. C1251 does not work anymore as a code. But now that let's say we want to change it. Let's say we want to change it back to 1251. We're going to enter 4235 star star. And then 1251. And then 0 star. And then the 1251 works as the code again. And 4231 does not. It's pretty basic. So it's a pretty basic system. Um, I guess if you want to use it, I mean, it's decently secure. I, I can tell you right now, most burglars probably don't know, unless they're smart, which most of them aren't, don't know about the whole thing where you can cut it open and then you can just do it. But, I mean, if this is decent for its time. I mean, it's a nice system. I mean, definitely, you could probably put it underwater and it won't... It won't stop working unless this little bit right here, which it probably at one point was held in, but considering the age of this, it probably let go. I think this is pretty cool, and another thing that's pretty decently cool is that this was made in the USA. I don't know if you can see that or not. It says made in the USA right there. The user manual, I don't have it on me since I left it in the photo scanner. So, what I was actually going to do was I'm going to post the uh, manual to this on my web server and have and link to it in the description, because it's actually a pretty cool... Um, a little thing to read. So I don't know how many of these are there are these are out there, but I picked this one up pretty cheap, and it's actually a pretty cool system for its age. I think it's pretty, pretty decently ingenious. I'm sure it's pro, and I'm sure not a lot of people will be able to figure out the whole fifth digit thing. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions about this or any other of my access control videos, feel free to leave them in the comments. Send me a personal message. I have my email on my YouTube channel, so you can go do that if you want. Alright, thanks very much.